Hi guys, welcome to Reen's Place. Today it's Fall Food Friday and I have a crock pot meal for you. Um, I just wanted to say welcome if you're from one of the other channels, Fallon's channels or one of the other ladies that's participating. Welcome to my channel. I hope you will consider subscribing. And if you're from my channel, please go over to Fallon's channel over at Moss Family TV. You can look up all the people that are participating in this collaboration for food for fall. Okay, so what we have today is a mushroom chicken orzo pasta um, crock pot meal. And I, let me see, where did I originally get this recipe from? I'm going to put you down here for one moment. I'll tell you where I found the original from. Okay, so I've seen Amber at home and she made a similar meal. I put a couple little changes to it to make it you know, more to my liking. Um, what I'm going to put in the crock pot is two chicken breasts. It's about a pound of chicken or so. Now what I did with my chicken breasts, I cut them into larger chunks and I salt peppered and a little garlic powder on them and then I just pan fried them. This step is totally optional. I honestly did it just to make it look a little bit more appealing so that maybe my husband will try it. Okay, so we have that going on. You're also going to need um, about a cup of mushrooms, eight ounces, not a cup, eight ounces of mushrooms. It's definitely more than a cup. You're going to need, um, in my recipe, this is where it differs. I put a cup of chopped butternut squash, and I bought that from my supermarket, already chopped, such a time saver. You need salt and pepper for seasoning, some paprika, some garlic powder, uh, I'm actually omitting the garlic powder since I put it on the chicken, and I'm just going to use some garlic, crushed garlic for the recipe. You're going to need a half a teaspoon of the paprika, half a teaspoon of the garlic powder if you're using it, half a teaspoon of sage. Again, the original recipe had oregano in it. I feel like with the butternut squash and the sage, it's going to give us more of a fall flavor, so I'm going to try that. Uh, and you're going to need a cup of chicken broth, and I'm going to use a teaspoon of the garlic, like I said. And um, later on, after it's cooked, you're going to need a cup of orzo pasta. So let's get started and get everybody in the crock pot here. Okay, I'm going to put this here. Okay, so in the crock pot, I'm going to add the um, chicken breast that I told you I pan fried with the juice that's in there. I'm also going to add... Okay, here we go. I'm going to add um, the chicken, the mushrooms, and I just gave those a rough chop. They were um, they were already sliced when I bought them from the supermarket, and I just gave them a rough chop. You don't really even need to do that part. I'm also going to put in the butternut squash and. Um, it's a half a teaspoon of paprika. I'm just going to eyeball it. That looks about half. A half a teaspoon or more of some sage. And I'll probably finish this with a little fresh sage at the end. I'm going to go for um, a teaspoon of minced garlic. Maybe a little more. Okay, what else do we need? Um, a cup of chicken broth. I'm just using a box that I bought from the store. Home canned is always good, but I'm trying to um, get rid of this, some of the stuff on my shelves. Okay, so we have chicken, mushrooms. We're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper for flavor. And that is all we have to put in here. I'm going to put the cover on my pot. I'm going to set it on low. I'm sorry. I'm going to set mine on high. It actually will work better if I plug it in. I'm going to set it on high for four hours. Is that correct? No, I'm going to set it on low for four hours. And in four hours, I will come back and we will do the next step, which is going to be adding that orzo pasta. All right, guys, stay tuned. Okay, guys, it's been four hours. And it's time now to add the pasta.
It smells really good. I feel like next time I'm going to add a little bit more butternut squash because it doesn't seem like a lot. So we have one cup of pasta, and I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm just going to stir it around to make sure that it's all covered with liquid, that everything's wet. I'm also going to take a little piece of chicken here for the taste. Mm. It's really good, but it definitely needs a little salt. So I'm going to add a little salt. Again, stir it real quick. And then I'm going to turn my crock pot from on low to high and the recipe says 15 minutes so I'm going to do that and in 15 minutes I will come back and we will check it together let me just put it on here low okay be back in 15 minutes okay so it's been 15 minutes looks good let's see stir it up let's see these are done. I've never made pasta in a crock pot before. It's a little bit, a little bit more than al dente, so I think I'm going to close it up for five more minutes, and we'll be back. In five minutes. Okay, we're back. It's five minutes later, so that's a total of 20 minutes after I added the pasta. Give it another stir. It looks good. It smells really good. Let's taste the, the, I want to say rice, but let's taste the orzo. I don't want to scratch my pot, you know. Mm, that's good. A piece of chicken. Take a little picture of that. It looks so pretty. Okay. Just gonna orzo, the butternut squash, mushrooms. Let's go over here and have a taste real quick. You know what? I'm going to just take a little taste of everything here. It's super hot, so I'm going to try not to... Oh, the chicken is super tender. I want to get the butternut squash, a little pasta, a mushroom, and a piece of chicken. really good. Now I could use salt, but instead I'm going to try a little Romano cheese. I buy the kind in the bag and I just stick it in an old shaker that I have here. Let's see. Mmm. That's delicious. You know what? It's really hearty. It definitely will fill you up on a cold fall night. Definitely try this one if you haven't before. I'm going to add the link below for the Fall Food Friday collaboration. And I'm also going to see if I can find Amber at Home's original recipe. And I'll link that as well. Hers is slightly different than mine, but that was where I got the inspiration for this dish. Again, I hope you guys enjoy the meal. I hope you enjoy the videos. Check them all out. And, um... We will be 
next week doing another video. So check back. Thanks so much for watching.